Hello, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, college football fans, NFL football fans across the nation and around the world. This is Tim May with the Tim May Show. Man, been looking forward to this uh, interview for a couple of weeks. Matter of fact, in, in between the time I was in contact with Gary on Conley and we finally uh, uh, made it happen, brought it to fruition, um, he went from playing in the UFL to signing uh, with the uh, Dallas Cowboys. His his NFL career is back on schedule, back on the burner, and I know he's very much looking forward to it. And I have this nice little interview uh, that's going to come up in just a moment with uh, Gary on Conley. Really enjoyed talking to him. He's always been soft-spoken, uh, self-deprecating to a certain extent, but uh, you can always tell the confidence is there. That's what gets you to the National Football League, having the ability and the wherewithal, but also having the confidence that you belong. Sometimes when people tell you, you don't anymore. And uh, his is a, a definite uh, story of resilience, perseverance, and basically self-belief that, in fact, uh, you still have the goods uh, to play in the National Football League. You know, he's a former first-round draft pick, uh, right on down with the, lot, with the uh, Oakland Raiders, and then right on down the line. Uh, now he's signed a free agent contract or signed a roster contract with the Dallas Cowboys. And so we'll see where that goes. But uh, Gary, on, you know, it's, it's funny. I bring it up with him in the interviews you'll hear. People keep talking, even yours truly keeps talking about this, probably being the most, talented roster top to bottom uh, that I've covered at Ohio State. I'm going into my 41st year covering Ohio State football. Uh, and this, you know, of course, the last six years with LettermanRoad.com after I retired. <laughs> but uh, uh, I look back on that 2015 team, man, and I still say, boy, if this team is more talented than that one. Now, I'm talking about depth of the roster. Maybe this one is. But when you consider 26 players off the 2015 roster who were drafted, all of them uh, in the in the uh, top five rounds, except for one player, Noah Brown, who I think might still be in the National Football League as we speak. Uh, I'm talking about we're drafted over the next uh, three years, 16, 17, and 18 draft. That was a pretty damn deep roster uh, from a talent standpoint. So uh, we'll see what Garyon has to say about that. Uh, and the, and the other thing is, uh, you know, people have moments in their life which test them. How do they how do they respond to that test? You know, that's the big thing. He's had quite a few moments in his life that tested him. And uh, and he stepped back. And, and the thing is, he learned lessons. And the most I think one of the more interesting parts about Gary on Conley right now, he lives in the Houston area. I'm sure he's going to be moving to Dallas. But uh, he's tried to give back to his community back in Maslin. Ohio. I think this will be the fifth year that he's had a, a youth camp, a one day youth camp for uh, different levels of youth, aspiring youth football players, where he also tries to convey lessons, you know, life lessons, et cetera. And, uh, and he's learned a lot of them the hard way. So uh, hats off to Gary and Conley. And, you know, with that in mind, let's get straight to my uh, interview with former Buckeye, uh, former NFL first-round draft pick, former having to uh, step away from the game because of injuries to a certain extent, and then getting his life back in order from the standpoint of a health standpoint, getting in the UFL, uh, not really swallowing pride like he said, man. You know, it was basic, basically to get back in there to see if he still belonged to see, you know, to prove himself. Again, and now he's back in the National Football League on an NFL roster with America's team, the Dallas Cowboys. Without further ado, here's my interview with Gary on Conley. Oh, my goodness, look who I've caught up to, ladies and gentlemen. It's Gary on Conley, former High State Buckeye, former first round draft pick, former down and outer, former UFL star, now signed with the Dallas Cowboys again. In the meantime, he's got his own. Uh, of uh, youth camp that's going to be fired up again this year in Maslin. As a matter of fact, this coming Saturday. Uh, Gary and Conley, you are quite the busy man. Yes. <laughs> are, can you can you imagine everything's coming down the way the way it's come down the last month or so for you and your 
in your professional career, you, uh, yeah, I think you played a little bit with the UFL this year, and all of a sudden you sign a, a contract with the Dallas Cowboys. Um, you're moving into new digs in Dallas, et cetera. And uh, just how much of a whirlwind have the last uh, like month or so been? Uh, it's been sporadic, <laughs> like I've been saying. Uh, yeah. But it's been a blessing. Uh, the whole journey has been a blessing. Um, and I'm just glad to be here. I thank God for just being here and being able to elevate from where I've been. Exactly. Hey, I, I want to talk about that in a minute, but I do want to talk about your camp. I mean, because this is kind of near and dear to your heart, isn't it? I mean, uh, explain to people where it is, when it is, but uh, why it is, you know? Yeah, uh, this will be my fifth uh, youth camp, fifth free youth camp uh, at my high school, Maslin. Um, I got taken away because of COVID, so I didn't do it for a year or two, and then started up again last year. Um, and then this would be my fifth one. But, yeah, I do it for uh, kids, obviously, back home. One, because that's where I'm from. It's just to give back to the youth and give them opportunity to showcase their skills and to also have fun. And uh, just to be like a role model or inspiration to kids and uh, people around where I'm from. But also to give inspiration to everybody to do that back where they're from. Um, other players that don't or not even just football players, anybody, any athlete or anybody just to go back to their hometown or wherever they're at. Like, because I did a camp here in Houston where I live. Uh, I think that was two years ago. Um, free camp as well. Um, so not just going back home and do it, but just anywhere, just giving back. Yeah, exactly. Why is that important to you? Uh, I mean, it's important to me because I know I didn't have a lot. Well, I didn't have any football camps, but I didn't really play football. But I know um, uh, Eric Snow, I remember him. He did a camp for, like, a lot of youth basketball players in uh, Canton, Ohio, and I remember going to that. And that was kind of one of the things that inspired me. But other than that, there wasn't really anything where I was from to do, like, camps and meeting people that were in the NBA or NFL or anything. I mean, we got the Pro Football Hall of Fame there. Um and that's like the only place where you've seen a pro athlete, you know, like yeah. nobody really came back um, to talk to us or knew anything like that, you know. So and I knew a big thing for me, um, I have a lot of brothers and sisters and I'm the oldest. So just always being a role model inspiration was a thing for me as a young kid. So it was just important for me to keep doing that and find other ways to be a role model inspiration to others, not just my family. Yeah, you're even bringing people from Texas with you, aren't you, to the, to the yeah. camp? <laughs> Do I have that yeah. right? <laughs> yeah, so uh, my stepson is a junior, about to be a senior. Um, he plays football, and when he moved in uh, his freshman year, going into his freshman year, I was training, and there were some kids that were going to be freshmen as well with him. And they just asked to train, and I started training them. Uh, they actually made me like enjoy training and seeing them grow and get better as young men and as athletes. Uh, I started to make it a business um, and I started training kids. Um, but because those were like my first ones who really made me want to do it, I trained them for free and I still train them for free. Wow. And uh, we had talked about taking a trip. It was just a thing like brought up. It wasn't even like a real thing, like the freshman year. They were like junior year going into summer or senior year, summer, like, let's go to Ohio State. And I said, I'll take y'all. Y'all just find a way to get y'all flights and I'll take care of the rest. And junior year came up and I asked them about it and they didn't think I was serious. And I was like, yeah, let's go. And they got their flights handled and I started a GoFundMe to um, get their travel expenses, uh, like the Sprinter and all that. And then the hotel taken care of and then the yeah. meals and taking them to Cedar Point, taking them to the Hall of Fame taking them to visit Ohio State. So we're doing that, and we'll be there for, like, a week. That's not camp, man. That's that's a vacation. Yeah. I hope they appreciate you. Do they yeah. do you think they appreciate you? <laughs> no, definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're, yeah. They're, they're excited. Some of them have never even been on a flight before. Um, wow. And I know they appreciate it because I told them, I said, you guys are excited to go to Ohio. Most people are excited to get out of Ohio. <laughs> so Exactly. Hey, definitely an appreciation. 
By the way, I was just down in Texas over the weekend for a niece's wedding, and uh, I was excited to get. I was my uh, my younger bro my baby brother, I call him, who's sixty six years old. He has a uh, he has a weekend ranch outside Lagrange, you know, where J.K. Dobbins is from, and uh, yeah. I think the feel like temperature on Sunday when my wife and I left flying back out of Austin was one hundred and five. So. Yeah. it's supposed to be 100 yeah. something today when we leave <laughs> yeah i grew up in lufkin texas which is north of houston up there and uh i don't miss that i don't miss summers in <laughs> texas at all brother hey, yeah, hey this kid, you, you know you're gonna have a summer in texas for sure although uh, do the cowboys no the cowboys don't go out to thousand oaks anymore do they anymore do they they still go out to thousand oaks for a uh, training camp uh yes, o Oxnard or I, I don't know Oxnard, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. right, that's right. But uh, yeah. but just real quick, let's get that in a nutshell. Uh, Darren, you were first round draft pick by the mm -hmm. Oakland Raiders. Um, and you know this idea that this is the most talented roster in Ohio State history coming up this season. Uh, I was just you know I've been saying that too, just from the top to bottom. But dude, that two thousand. 15 team ended up with like 26 people drafted all mm. 25 of them in, in the, in five, in the top five rounds, only the, in the 20s, uh, can't remember, uh, Noah Brown, I think went in the seventh round. I think he's still in the league. Right. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, <laughs> but, so what do you think about it? When people say this is maybe the most talented on state roster in history, you look back on that. You were taken in the 2017 draft in the first round. You were part of BIA. I think you guys BIA had, five defensive backs taken over two years in the first round, first or first two rounds. So what do you think yeah. when uh, people say this might be the most talented Ohio State roster this year? You got to take umbrage, um, right? Yeah. I mean, if it is, then I'm glad. Like, that's that's the goal. Like I said, my inspiration or my thing is to inspire and be a role model to the youth. And you want the youth to be better than you. You don't want them to be the same as you. So if it is, I hope it is so we can get a natty this year. Um, yeah. But we definitely will always be rumored or talked about as one of the best or most talented groups for sure. Hey, have you gotten to watch any of Ohio State? I mean, like, uh, you know, keep up with a little bit about from the like the defensive backfield. I mean, Denzel Burke sitting there. Uh, you know, they got the kid from from Alabama, Caleb Downs, you know, Davis and Nick Benoson, uh, Lathan Ransom. Uh, but Davis and Nick Benoson, the transfer last year from Ole Miss, Caleb Downs, the transfer this year from Alabama the safety, Lathan Ransom, you know, has been there. He was really coming on last year until he got hurt. And, of course, Denzel Burke, he probably has yeah. you as a role model among his role models and stuff. But what do you think just specifically about their secondary this year? It does look extremely talented. You got Jermaine Matthews sitting right there ready to play anywhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think they're talented. Um, I mean, people who know me, I don't really watch sports. So, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I watch yeah. I watch a lot of film, like I study film, but I don't even watch sports a lot. So I don't know a lot about each player, but um, I've heard things about each player from like past players and coaches and people who are around the facility um, that they they should be really good this year. And um, I've talked to Denzel Burke a little bit and I've talked to uh, Matthews a little bit um, and they explain like how they've been working and things have been going good. So I'm looking forward to it this year for sure. Hey, if you could give any of these guys words of advice, headed because almost everybody I named could be in the NFL draft this coming year, except for Caleb yeah. Downs. What well, what would what would be your as you've gone through you've gone through quite the gauntlet. Now you, all of a sudden you're back in the NFL. You're you know you're signed with the with the Dallas Cowboys. Uh, what would be your word of advice for them? Take nothing for granted. I mean, what what would it be? Uh, I would say be resilient. Um, that's been my main thing. Uh, I've based my whole journey off resilience. Um, because there's gonna be ups, there's gonna be downs, there's gonna be things that don't go your way, there's gonna be things that go your way. Um, just being resilient, um, to get through all the bad things um that come your way and just keep pushing, like no matter what, just keep going. And as a corner, you have to be like that because you're never gonna play a perfect game. I don't know one guy that's played a perfect game at a corner. Um or at DB in general. I mean, I don't yeah. know one guy that's played a perfect game in football, but at corner for sure, because you could have the best game and you can give up the touchdown in the last play, or you could have the worst game and make the game win the play. So it's just about being snap it clear and uh, being resilient. Yeah. 
hey, real quick for you. I mean, I, seriously, you, I would read your book if you wrote it. But I mean, someone tried to take your pro career away from you even before it started. You know, well, we'll get into the details about that, you know, false accusations, et cetera. You persevered. Yeah. Uh, you know, you got it done. You ended up being a first round draft pick. Uh, then you get it, then you get in the NFL. I think you got a little injury situation and things like that. But the point is, what was what was the what was the toughest part over the over the last many years? What was the toughest thing you went through? Man, the toughest, I, I don't know what the toughest. It's it's been a crazy journey. Um I think just finding my peace was the toughest thing. Um yeah. Yeah, I couldn't name one. It was, it was a lot of battles. Uh, just finding my peace within all the battles. I think uh, the main thing for me was finding, even if it I didn't feel like it was my fault, finding where my responsibility was within anything that happened to me. So like the rape case, like false accusation. I know I didn't do it. I know I was innocent the whole time. <laughs> but where is my responsibility in it? I had to go back and look at it like, I should have never been in a room with that girl in the first place, no matter that I didn't do anything or not. You know, that's yeah. that's where I felt my responsibility was. And that is where I was able to find peace within that situation. Um, injuries. Uh, I mean, there's no way to go around an injury that happens like that. But it's just like, oh, I could have took care of my body better. I could have did more prehab, you know, stuff, prevention, injury stuff, uh, just taking everything like that. And that's how I found my peace. Um, but there, there wasn't one thing. I think everything was equally tough. Um, but just trusting God that I got to keep fighting. And I kept fighting and I'm here and I'm still going. Yeah. I think that's the toughest thing for modern day kids to come to grips with what you just said. Modern day people really is, we are. you know what? Yeah. Somebody else may have played a role in this, that, and the other, but it's Look in the mirror, right? And uh don't put yourself in that situation again. Like you said, right on yeah. down the line. That was that was great. Uh great lesson there. Uh when you get the call from the Dallas Cowboys, but number one, why did you de- why did you decide I'm gonna give UFL a shot? You know, it will g- give people an idea of what went into that. Uh because you know, nobody would have been surprised if maybe you walked away from pro football, right? But uh yeah. you still felt like you had it. Go ahead. Yeah, so there were times, I think that was one part of the tough thing for me. Uh, there were times where I thought about it, like, man, I just, I can't get through this. I might have to just retire, you know. Um, yeah. And I had, like, seven, not to to count specifically, um, I would have to go back, but I had at least seven surgeries. Um, and it was just to the point where I was just like, I got to find a way. That was just my motto, like find a way to get through this injury. And I had a daily affirmation that I always wrote down that I can overcome this injury. And I took a holistic approach the last two years and started to see um, growth and um, progress. And I got an opportunity to start running without pain. Um, and I felt good and I kept progressing. And I was like, I want to give it one more shot. Like I want to go out on my terms, not have an injury have me go out. And I was actually ready to play in the league um, this past season. And I told my agent, like, you can start telling the team that I'm good to do workouts or whatever. But I just didn't get the opportunity. Um, and a guy who was a scout at the Raiders is now the GM, Von Hutchins. Shout out to him. Uh, he called me and said, if I don't have an opportunity with the NFL, that he has an opportunity for me in the UFL. And one thing about me, like, I'm humble. I don't have any pride. I'm not going to say, like, oh, I'm a first-round draft pick, so I'm only going to do the NFL or I'm going to wait or no. Nah. Like, I would do the CFL or UFL or whatever opportunity I would get. And I knew I didn't play in four years, so it was less likely for a team to pick me up, you know. So yeah. uh, I just knew it was an opportunity for me to play, um, to get filmed. And I know there's guys that have – talent and caliber to be in the NFL you know they get the short end of the stick for whatever reason so I knew it was just an opportunity for me to get tape and to show I could still play do you feel refreshed almost what what, what is that sense like you said the body yeah. feels whole again I mean what 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 what, what how do you feel just physically right now yeah I mean I feel good uh refresh is definitely the word um I mean when I played 
my first or not even played uh when I practiced my first snap of full pads like it felt like a game I was just like whoa like I had to get used to that game yeah. but still like getting through that day I think uh one thing I started doing was being grateful for every day every win so like making it through my first day of pads like writing my journal like grateful that I made it through um I actually missed the first game because of like a tweak in my hamstring but it was like I was still grateful just to be there because it's like, man, I went through way more than a tweaked hamstring, you know? So yeah. came back the next week, won my first game back, you know, playing. Um, so at the end of that game, prayed and being grateful for that, just taking it but like that and taking that approach and everything is refreshing and just continuing to do what I did. I think that's the hard part now is continuing to do what I did to get here. Cause you know, you get that sense of like little relaxation once you get to a spot. So I think that's the main thing for me now is just continuing to work. Like I didn't make it through the season or like I need to get back still. Can I, can I ask you a, uh, uh, an odd question, but when you got out there, I always used to ask players like you uh, who are elite level players, you know, when did you realize that not only were you a, not only were you good, but when you played against other guys who were good, you were still good. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> uh, from a talent <laughs> standpoint, did you know? And this isn't putting down anybody in the UFL, but did you feel like, okay, yeah, I am still a first round draft pick level kind of player? Did it? Did it feel like that out there? Uh, yeah. You know what I I'm mean, saying? Yeah. Yeah, I, I get what you're saying. Uh, I mean, like I said, me, I'm I'm very humble. Uh, but I feel like it's just different situations for everybody. Um, like, I feel like there's guys that go undrafted that play to first round talent caliber. I feel like there's guys that get drafted first round that aren't as good, you know, um, yeah. it just depends on the situation and there's guys that can get better over time. Um, but I feel like that league as they merged, I feel like it was more talent. Um, there were guys that played in the league that played game seasons in the league. So it was a good opportunity for me. Um, I do feel like me being in that league, um, not so much as talent, it showed my my mental was like first round. Like I was able to lock in and like, cause it's part of the, the culture, like the coaching is not, you know what I'm saying? Not to the elite level, um, but that's the goal. Like to get back to the NFL, like as far as logistics and the team and how everything goes about. But me being able to understand because I've been there and done that stuff um, to hold myself to that standard and not fall victim to a lower standard. I think that was a big thing for me. Yeah. Yeah. I, I've always believed in the NFL. Once you get to that level, 90 percent of the game is played between your ears. Right. I mean, for sure. you're there because <laughs> physically you have that ability. But now how do you right. recognize, yeah. et cetera? That's that right. had to be. That had to feel that pretty, ability. Yeah. Go ahead. That had to feel pretty good to you, though, to have that clicking. Right. Yeah, for sure. Like I said, uh, everyone in the NFL has that ability. I mean, and then when talent meets talent, what what separates you is going to yeah. be the hard work and it's going to be the mental stability. Yeah, exactly. You and Malik Hooker back together again? Do I have that right? Yeah, man. That's my that's favorite. That's crazy, safety. isn't it? Huh? All the time. My favorite safety, man. That's my brother. <laughs> hey, last thing. If things go great for you now, I mean, obviously you got training camp, you know, coming up and. I don't. Are y'all done with OTA? I mean, well, you haven't done OTAs yet. Are you? Yeah, you've done OTAs with the Cowboys, haven't you? At least one. No, no, no. I did. Uh, they were done when I did my workout. So I just did a workout, and then they signed me. Gotcha. Hey, real quick, just tell people in what that felt like to be offered and signed again. What What did like you said? You don't want to rest on your laurels now, but did it feel like you had gotten to? You know, you t climb stairs, you get the little landing take a deep breath you know what I mean yeah what did definitely, it feel like definitely it, it felt like a reset uh refresh button like you said earlier um it was a blessing for sure I appreciate the Cowboys for believing in me um but there's still work to put in but I'm just thankful and uh I believe in God and God showed me that I could get through anything and I think that was just another step to just to show that my faith is strong gotcha Gary, and last thing, man. Um, yeah, do you, in, in a way, do you feel like you're just starting again? I mean, what you know, what is that? Uh, I mean, I you know about the refresh thing, but does it just feel like, hey, 
this time is going to be, it's going to be the dream. You know, what, what, what is that sense? You know? Uh, I mean, I, I treat it. I've been telling myself like, this is a, a rookie year again. Um, yeah. just more molded. I'm um, going into my rookie year. It's like another opportunity. It's like, kind of like one of those things, like if you could go back and do what you could, would you change anything? And it's like, I get that opportunity now, you know, yeah. I wouldn't change anything. Uh, I would always do better. Exactly. But I think it's just one of those opportunities where it's like, now I get another shot. Now you got to do it better. Gotcha. Hey, and let's give people one last uh, refresher before we get out of here. Uh, your camp is uh, Saturday at Maslin, uh, Maslin High School. Uh, uh, it's uh, basically free free admission, et cetera, for the youngsters and stuff. What what age groups, by the way, uh, is it? Yeah, so um, it's a free camp on June 29th, which is actually my birthday. Um, yeah, I know. I was going to ask you about that, but go ahead. <laughs> is that nah, significant? Or, go ahead. No, nah, I don't celebrate my birthday, so that's why I wanted to do it. Uh, Always young. Birthday. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Um, but ages six to uh, 13. Um, so I do two now as I started last year, uh, ages six to 13 for the youth camp. And that's yeah. 930 to 1130 and then or 930 to 11. And then the high school camp, which is I put 13 to 18 because, you know, there's some 13 year olds that are advanced that want to go with the high school group and some want to stay with the middle school. So the high school camp is 13 to 18, and that starts at noon until 2.30 at Masson High School. Wow, what a give back, man. What a give back. Uh, here in Conley, man, it, it was great to catch up with you. And, uh, you know, sometimes you root for people from afar. They don't even know you're rooting for them, you know. But I think a lot of us have always rooted rooted for you, uh, especially that thing that happened. I mean, we, we, we already touched on that and stuff. But, uh, yeah. man, good luck to you. And uh, m make sure those youngsters uh, – from Texas understand, uh, you know, how nice it is in Ohio. Cause we yeah. do have seasons up here, not just two. <laughs> winter lasts for like three days, I think in Houston, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> hey, appreciate you, man. Thanks for joining the Tim May show. Yep. Thank you for having me, man.